when I was younger, um, it was really romanticized that you're going for it and just keep going. And, you know, it's like you have to work 24 hours, do four movies in one time, you know, five shifts, don't sleep, don't eat. And the more a person does that, the more successful you will be. But as I have seen and lived more life, I've realized having a work-life balance is really important. So when you talk about a beach, I was in Turks and Caicos just recently. My phones were off, me and my husband, just by ourselves. We spent time, we walked on the beach, we collected shells. Um, and then I came back feeling rejuvenated, feeling excited and really motivated to take my career forward. I mean, this generation of girls is fearless. And there's so many girls that take charge of their own lives and they say you know I'm not going to fit into the cookie cutter mold that probably my mother did or my grandmother had to and it's so like I have goosebumps right now just thinking about it I meet so many young women who have changed the trajectory of their families because of the choices that they've made are you happy in life um mm. yeah actually yeah. happier than I've been in a really long time okay why do you say that I think I reached a place where I stopped struggling with the things I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's maturity. Maybe it's um, being on the other side of 35, I guess. And um, maybe it is just having uh, my feet on the ground and a little bit more stable ground. Um, but I think I'm not running as fast as I was. I'm thinking about the steps I take. Um, I'm in a really comfortable, content place when it comes to my life. And the choices that I'm making are mine and are not defined by other people or the validation that I probably needed when I was younger. So I think that's made me a little bit more happy and calm. Okay. While you say all that, uh, I feel yours is one of the biggest success stories that India has ever seen. Like very few Indian actors or anyone from the media industry has reached where you've reached in your life. Aren't you like done? Like, like uh, why do you want more? I, I'll what you why. kind of question is that? I meant, see, I have this vision for myself that I'm only going to work till about 35, 40 because then I just want to chill on a beach. I'm asking you from the beach scenario. Sure. Uh, don't you, don't you kind of want to go on a beach because every time you take up something new, there is a trade-off of mental health in the long term. But you're just going for it. Like you were going for it even during the last conversation and you're going for it now. So I'm just trying to like explore what's happening and why. I can help you understand it a little bit. Yeah. When I was younger, um, it was really romanticized that you're going for it and just keep going. And, you know, it's like you have to work 24 hours, do four movies in one time, you know, five shifts, don't sleep, don't eat. And the more a person does that, the more successful you will be. But as I have seen and lived more life, I've realized having a work-life balance is really important. So when you talk about a beach, I was in Turks and Caicos just recently. My phones were off, me and my husband, just by ourselves. We spent time, we walked on the beach, we collected shells. Um, and then I came back feeling rejuvenated, feeling excited and really motivated to take my career forward. So this romanticization of work has to be tough and work has to be rough, and it's not. Work can be your companion. Work can be creative. Work can be something that gives you joy. And now I've reached a point where that work-life balance for me is most important. I will work on the six verticals that I'm working on. You know, my business, my production, my book, my acting, whatever. But when I switch off, I'm with my family. I'm at home. I watch movies. I do whatever I want to do. So then when I come back to work the next day, I have the focus to be able to do even more things. Mm. So... When you're talking about retiring at like 35, 40, sure. If you want to have a shack in Goa, it used to be my dream when I worked like that too. But I want to have a shack in Goa, not wear shoes, chappal pen ke, have fish fry all day, <laughs> you know, and that's what I wanted to do. But as I realized that there's something, I love my job yeah. and I love being able to create in very different ways. I have the privilege to be in a position that not many have been in. And I've created that by myself. I don't want to give it up. And I don't want anyone to take it away from me. It's my legacy for my children and for the future generation that may not have even seen the potential of something like that for themselves. Why would I give it up? Again, I feel you're helping a younger version of yourself. Sure. Somewhere in some other universe. I like deep sea diving. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what, you want to know about one of my favorite new hobbies? Yeah. It's watching really old episodes of Coffee with Karan and then seeing how everyone's trajectories were in life. Yeah. 
and my favorite episode one of my favorites was the one you did i think with arjun rampal in season 1 oh my gosh even i i don't even know what i was what was i like then you, you, very different <laughs> <laughs> how old must i when was that season 2004 holy wow you would you like to know yeah. as, as a podcaster yeah yeah i want to know i can't even 2004 that means that's one year into me being an actor yeah um i feel you're even different from like 3 years ago because lots sure. has happened in those 3 sure. years uh you're even more chill now yeah like i can i can feel that yeah. uh, uh you were very like hyper kind of alpha when i yeah. last saw you in 2019 and in that episode you're deeply professional and what's the word conscientious mm-hmm. you were like that like you were just you're very professional i think karan johar said hey you know well done and all and your response was yeah i'm just trying to do my best job guys it was kind of like that <laughs> and i was like that's so nervous i didn't know anything about the industry i mean the closest i had come to being in the business was taking a vacation to bombay when i was 11 years old with my brother and it was like wow bombay you know that park where they have the shoe and the hanging garden yeah hanging and i had photographs in the hanging gardens even now and that was like going to the beach was seeing the queen's necklace all of that was all i knew about mumbai mm. the industry was terrifying to me and i think that's probably why i reacted like that it it it's a great message for young people cuz lots of people idolize you now because of what you've done now without understanding that it takes something as simple as that when you're beginning just be professional or just give yourself a break it's okay you just have to do the best you can survive keep your head above water and slowly you'll see you'll be walking on it mm when did you realize that you're starting to become successful in life um it's a really tough question because when i won my first pageant which was miss india i was like wow i've won the world i'm really successful then i won miss world and i was like ye kaise ho gaya <laughs> did not even like i had no computation of the, again 18 17 had i had no understanding how it happened but what i did understand was the opportunity it gave me suddenly people knew me wanted to know me gave me new opportunities there were movies that were coming my way i didn't know anything about how how do you sign a movie my poor father was a physician he to didn't know even more and he was like highly protective they gave up their practice and for two working doctors who were very successful in bareilly and there's something i didn't even think about till i was like 30 years old gave up everything to pursue my 19 year old dream my 19 year old opportunities that even when someone sees your life the way you speak about it there's a lot of blessings at like a lot absolutely. of points you believe in karma absolutely you believe in reincarnation i do do you think about what you did in your previous life to get this life now i hope so i do and i always think about it like if you think um why do i have why am i lucky enough to have the life that i do and some other woman somewhere else with the same opportunity with the same desires same ambitions same you know needs doesn't have any of it i really think about that a lot i it makes me feel like there must be something i did right i wake up every day with a sense of gratitude and i wake up every day with wanting to give back whether that's with the person that is standing right next to me or whether that is a a life choice that i might make but giving back i think is so crucial when it comes to being grateful i'm highly grateful for everything that i have and i do think that maybe i did something right that i've been blessed with the opportunity of having the life being born to the parents that i was being able to have the opportunity of making my own choices having agency in my own life if you think about women around the world so many don't have that like complete choices are made for themselves but my parents told me you have to have your opinion what a privilege mm. yeah that's that's a part of the blessing being born absolutely. to those parents i mean yeah. that's the biggest one probably yeah completely um wow <laughs> okay hold on i got to i got to take my Sorry. thoughts and just put them together i made you speechless no no ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay um with this whole journey mm-hmm. and this is a question that's been sent in from a lot of people who i spoke to before this chat mm-hmm. uh i firstly i wanted want to tell you that you inspire men women everyone it's not about you just inspiring women okay but i think you've shown a lot of women possibility 
like an entire generation needed to be shown possibility which has happened through people like yourself uh who was supposed to be born exactly in your age bracket to set the tone for like 80s born 90s born 2000s born i absolutely agree i was talking to somebody else about this yesterday a young actor who was talking to me and i really did say that my generation of women changed the trajectory of the next generation of yep. women my co-actors female co-actors that fought to be the face on the poster that fought for agency in the movies that a lot of women didn't get before us just opened the doors for the generation after us and i think not just for women but people our generation and every generation will always have a prototype that will be better than us mm. because we have change the landscape right yeah. and that's a huge responsibility on all of us i like remember mary com being one of the first female led films yeah. and now that so did, many films are that female. did um, commercially well yeah. at that time yeah i remember yeah. a mainstream yeah, female yeah mainstream led. female led. um and now there's so many female led films like and that's the thing like that's another sorry not to put you on the spot no, but no. films are films yeah and we still talk about female led films as female led films we don't say that's a male led film yeah. this person's film amir khan's movie oh we're watching a male led film today no, I, i hear you but i'm also talking on behalf of the indian masses completely but that's as a vocabulary we need to change yep. that female athlete female pos- uh, politician female actress why mm. actress politician athlete w- what is your message for okay i'm going to ask you what's your message generally and what's your message for girls and i'm also going to give you a supplemental point and say that this is not the end <laughs> of the podcast you said one at a time <laughs> it's not the end of the podcast we see the so and more to unpack <laughs> but i actually do want to ask you a message uh, for young ambitious women out there my sister um my girlfriend my my friends everyone had this exact question for you that what's the message for the girls who are starting out their careers or who are trying be, to climb i think it can be very scary um you know we i mean this generation of girls is fearless and there's so many girls that take charge of their own lives and mm. they say you know i'm not going to fit into the cookie cutter mold that probably my mother did or my grandmother had to and it's so like i have goosebumps right now just thinking about it i meet so many young women who have changed the trajectory of their families because of the choices that they've made um i think my message would be that there's a lot of noise around us narratives yeah and people that tell us to be a certain way that people that tell us that you know um i was talking the other day about someone that when i went to convent school i had this thing called moral science a subject mm. called moral science which taught me how you know women shouldn't be uh, women should be seen not heard um the lengths of our skirts how we should sit with our legs um there's so much that has been told to women that to be a good girl you have to be a certain way good girls don't make history hmm. you know what i mean hmm. bold girls make history bold people make history so if you want to be the lead actor of the of your movie which is your life you've got to take choices that might be contrary to what you've heard and that empowerment may or may not come from your parents may or may not come from your family or boyfriend or whoever you're around it comes from you and that no one can do you know i again was lucky maybe because my parents gave me that but i try to remind young girls specifically that if you don't have that if you don't have that encouragement in your home try to find it in your gut because no one's going to fix your life but you or try to find it from content and i'm not yeah. just speaking on behalf no, of no it's this. true it is really true mm. try to find inspiration from people that inspire you i have been inspired every day by collaborators that i work with The reason I take new steps is because I see someone else doing something new, and I'm like, "Wow, yar, ye kitta chhai diye? Kaise kiya is insaan ne?" But I don't just sit with that. I think about my life in the game. What new idea is there? What can I do that will make me feel how I feel about this person? It's about that feeling. It's about imbibing from the people around you, and it could be someone you admire on television. It could be someone in your class. It could be someone that you work with. But when you see something that you admire about some someone, imbibe it. Mm. All this is exactly why I love that you're taking up entrepreneurship as your next step, like very actively. You've been an entrepreneur in the past, but here you're going like all out and saying that, okay. this is like the next big step uh i also feel that uh people 
my age but actually younger than me gen z deeply entrepreneurial everyone absolutely. wants to start like their absolutely. businesses uh, and i'm sure you see this difference between like 80s and 90s born Completely. people and then the next one uh how did this entrepreneurship thing start pc like where did it start and how how far do you want to take it i don't know i don't think about the future i'm not someone who i plan for the future but i don't think about how far i can go i mean who knows what my future holds for me but what i can think about is my present um and like i said i like to imbibe from people that i know you know so, your your future is so bright <laughs> that there's conspiracy <laughs> theories about you that you've made deals with the devil to achieve this level of success <laughs> that you're Why? a satanic worshiper horrible it's, like, it's that level of success oh, that you reach oh should you be very upset <laughs> with me huh? <laughs> sorry but go on go on <laughs> um no i i just think that like i told you i like to imbibe from the people around me when i was becoming an actor I didn't know anything about acting. So I used to sit and watch my co-actors. I used to sit and watch why they did what they did. So <laughs> this came from a really funny thought. My mom, as soon as I turned 30, she <laughs> she's an entrepreneur. She's a doctor. She created her own business. Um but when as soon as I turned 30, she sat me down and she said, "Look, you're in Bollywood. Your shelf life is over." you know nobody all these 50 year old actors only want to work with the girls in their 20s so after 30 you're not going to have a job very much you know just like you have to start planning for your future so what about making your own movies you know starting production and that at that time is really funny considering i'm 40 and i'm still have a very active acting career but it was foresight on her end um in an industry which kind of told women that that you know when you're 30 sorry you're too old <laughs> um so i started getting interested in production just thinking about the fact that i was going to lo- lose my day job um and then that became really interesting to me the business of entertainment started becoming in this really interesting to me i used to talk a lot to my producer friends producers that i was working with what are the choices they make how are movies made so you have a cost of production you have to recover your cost of production to make profit so i started getting into uh, what margins look like and just understanding that and that was fascinating to me because mm. it's so creative um there are so many ways to be able to create something and i think once i started doing production um and i started working in america i i knew my manager happened to be a venture capitalist and she was really into tech and stuff so i was very interested in and at that time she was just a collaborator but i really got interested in investments um and i started with small investments in little things and then those things became really big like bumble so when i brought bumble into india i mean bumble changed the dating scene mm. in india especially for girls and and that just showed me the power of being able to have a new idea and the idea at that time was when bumble was launched around the world and whitney who's a dear friend of mine and launched it she left tinder to make bumble because she saw the gap in the market that you know we want to be able to create a safe space where mm. women have the first opportunity where women can take the first step and that was such a brilliant plan and what i said to her was india needs it the most mm. because of especially the unsafe circumstances within which girls have to survive and live in sometimes in india and it's being used in tier 3 tier 4 now absolutely how mm. beautiful is that like again i have goosebumps just thinking about the fact that this came from an idea so ideas are what was really interesting to me and then being able to work with people who can help me execute ideas is what really started the entrepreneur um journey in me first i started with investments and anomaly is my first brand that i founded myself with the help of mesa thank you with the help of mesa that were um who are market leaders and leaders in incubating new brands specifically in beauty um and and then nike of course bringing them but i really lean on my partners to learn from them and i just love the fact that you can have an idea today and monetize it why not it you're not rec- you're not just um reduced to I won't say reduced to because I come from a family of doctors and engineers but at that time in my parents generation and the generation before that it was doctor engineer lawyer military <laughs> government job like those five or six things that everyone had to aim for but today like I think my generation of parents are not going to have those boxes for our children right you have an idea let's run with it yeah I have this little crystal ball with me everywhere that I go that only I can see and yeah. it shows me the future. 
Oh, yeah. I think you're going to be a multi-billionaire <laughs> going <laughs> From forward. your mouth to God's ears, please. <laughs> Remember the moment we had before the shoot began? I said, I don't want to talk to you until the camera started rolling and the lights went off. I crystal yeah. ball did that. <laughs> but I also, I also generally <laughs> want to talk about that crystal ball a little bit. Mm-hmm. And what it tells me, everyone knows that going to America was very good for the career, the material aspect of life. I feel it helped you a lot as a person as well. Uh, America does have this very different entrepreneurial energy. It's got like this little like accepting energy. As long as you're willing to work hard, the country just accepts you. Uh, you'll be able to create further opportunity yourself. But now I will let you unpack. I just, I feel, I feel it's been great for you. And uh, the, the harsh truth, I'm going to say it online, mm-hmm. is that India finds things cooler when they become cool abroad and then come back. I mean, that's a fact. Like that's, Swami Vivekanand is used as one example. That's our that's our colonial background. Yeah. We still haven't been able to shed that. You know, jab bahar acha hota, imported mal hona chahiye, you know, There's, we have a lot of equity on yep. um, on things that come from the West. That I agree is a fact. Um, but no, it's not it's not the easiest thing to be an Indian in America. Yeah. It's not easy. Even it's not Priyanka easy. Chopra mm-hmm. said that, felt yeah. that. I mean, yes, I've had a, I started working in the States in 2010 and in 2020, after 10 years of working in the industry, I started with music and then pivoted into acting in America. So started in 2010 for context. In 2020, I got my first leading role. How long did it take me? 10 years. So people don't think about how much hard work how much consistent knocking on doors, how much humility it takes to go to another country and start from scratch. I had built an incredible career here, amazing credibility here. And um, I got an opportunity to do music and people were curious about the fact that, because I could sing, what that could be. And I'm a big fan of the music industry anyway. We um, in India are monopolized by Bollywood when it comes to music so much. For now. I hope so. I hope so. That we've not really been able to bifurcate into pop, you know, pop music or pop culture when it comes to music. It's still very niche. So I was really a big fan of like music and musicians and um, very excited about that opportunity. Went there, worked with the most incredible musicians and quickly realized that I'm not as good as them, you know. Um, and I should go back to my day job. I don't like, I'm very um, astute when it comes to, I don't lie to myself. I'm very honest to myself. So I did the music. I love the music that I did for myself, but it wasn't my standard of excellence. It was good. It was fun. Played on the radio. It was successful, sold a lot of CDs, but it wasn't my lane. And that made me want to dabble in acting as well and see if there was an opportunity there. But it required me to strip every single thing that I knew in India and the laurels that I had achieved in India, the awards that I had won, the movies that I had done, the box office successes that I had seen. It required me to walk into rooms with extreme humility and introduce myself to people, to take my showreel and say, this is the work I have done. I would love to work with you. I would love to see if there's an opportunity with you. Um... I remember I had to do, I mean, I've done so many small roles in big movies in Hollywood. Um, but that's what it took for me when I started here too. A lot of people used to say to me, oh, she's left um, doing Bollywood movies to do small roles in Hollywood. It started with ev- every new actor starts there. You have to start with from the beginning. And I don't sit with that um you know, if you're, if I'm successful in one country, then everyone in the world should treat me like I'm a queen. It doesn't work that way. So I'm Which with, is the case for a lot of big stars most in, people, our, most in our Most people, anti- I don't know about that, but most people expect and anticipate that if you are treated a certain way or if you're making a certain amount of money um, in a certain country, you're going to be treated the same way because everyone is waiting in Hollywood to cast you, right? Mm. They're just waiting for Priyanka Chopra. Ha, we were just waiting for you to come <laughs> only, Priyanka. To change the trajectory of movies. Of course, <laughs> Hollywood is not the same without you. It doesn't work that way. You have to go. You have to pound the pavement. You have to walk in. You have to be rejected. You have to audition. And you have to work around the culture of a new country. And that was so hard. 
I had to swallow the humility pill and I was willing to do that hard work. And then 10 years later, I finally got my leading role in a movie. I finally got the same remuneration as a man, which I never did in Bollywood. I have never got the same check as my male co-actor, even if my part is the same, even if I've held the movie as much as I can. Finally, I got it in 2021 after 21 years of working. Mm. So it seems like, oh my gosh, America was so great for you and Hollywood was <laughs> awesome. But the tears that it took when you move to a new country with no friends, no family, working with people that don't know you and don't know what you are able to achieve. When I first started doing Quantico, my co-actors did not understand the hoopla around me. <laughs> they were like, why is, like, who is this person? Like, why are you, you know, the lead of, a, that was the first time I got a lead role in a television series. And they just couldn't understand why. And it, it, it required me to just, you know, be humble and say, I'm okay. This is a new environment. It, it's, it's easy to go you know, fishing from your boat, but when you have to go deep sea diving, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. So you have to learn according to your environment. So no, it wasn't easy. It was very hard. It took a lot of sweat, tears and blood from me to finally be able to reach where I have reached. So when you say, you know, I, I don't want to pass off um, the work that it took to get there and the time and the commitment that it took to get there. But look at you now. Look at me now. But it's, I'm still at the beginning. That's what I'm saying. It's the first movie that I'm doing with mm, as a lead part. Mm. Who knows where else I'll go? Again, the the mainstream narrative though on you is that things have just gone upwards. So I like I love that you're saying this. Because though. I'm not someone who um, talks about my struggles too much. Why don't we talk about your struggles a Let's little? Do it. Let's <laughs> we, do it. Okay. You have to ask me the questions. Did <laughs> people try jeopardizing your career here, there, at any point? Because that's. The one thing I'm slowly learning about success, like the moment you start climbing that ladder, there's too many people who don't like that you're climbing the ladder and try pulling you down. I don't know. Unfortunately, I feel like in India, we've been taught that mindset. We are not people as a people. Very few of us are happy for somebody else's success because we, we, again, I think my hypothesis and I don't know, I'm, I'm not someone who's an expert on the field. But my hypothesis is that, you know, we were colonized till 1947. Yeah, I agree. We just about, we've not even been 100 years. We've just about been our own country, our own people. It's divide and rule, but on an emotional level. Exactly. And our generation has to recognize that. Our generation has to say, hold on, hold on. Why is my natural instinct when someone is successful is to be jealous? Why is my natural instinct when someone is successful to be envious? Why is my natural instinct not saying, wow, you've done so great. Let me add on to this person. Let me push you forward because then you're pulling me forward. Mm. There is such a strength in numbers, which we don't recognize. If we only collectively banded together and supported other successful people in our fields, we would be unstoppable in the world. We are one fifth of the world's population, mm. but we've never been able to take our own stand mm. because of that reason. I feel this is something we can learn from the West. They Maybe. cheer each they other were, more than what we probably, do. Probably, mm. probably. I don't know about where that learning comes from, but I just, I, just like you, I've also had people wanting to jeopardize my career. Like what take used away to happen? From, I don't know, take away from work, make sure that I wasn't cast just because, you know, I was doing well in what I was doing. But that's not what stopped. I don't sit and wait and um, harp on. I mean, maybe I'll cry one night or the other when an opportunity was taken away from me. But I don't sit in the shit, you mm. know. You can sit in the shit and then you'll start smelling of it. And then you don't even know you're smelling of it because you've got so used to it. So then you just become dark and negative and you'll never move forward. You have to shut off the noise. There are many people that will want to pull you down. But don't focus on that. Focus on the one person that believes in you. Focus on the light, little sliver of light that you might see. A little bit of inspiration that you might see. And that's the hardest thing to do. Because you're bogged down by baggage. You're bogged down by shackles of people holding you down. So you have to really push forward. And that's just individual. Do you have that inside of you to fight that fight for yourself? Or are you going to wait for somebody else to do it? That's an individual choice. Let's talk about that little sliver of light. Yeah. I don't know how else to put this, but is that God for you? Is that the higher power? 
I, I mean, a lot of it is. I really do believe in destiny. I believe in, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who has a lot of faith. Um, I pray uh, a lot. What do you, how do you pray and what do you pray for? I do puja almost every day. I do but what, um, what, what's gratitude. Your, what's your interaction with the higher power? Thank you. And? It starts with thank you. Mm. It starts with thank you for my health, thank you for my life, thank you for my family, thank you for my life, uh, lifestyle, thank you for my ability to um, be a nice human being, to be a grateful person. Um, and then I'll ask for a few things too. <laughs> <laughs> what are you asking for now, PC? Um, Manifest it. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that I believe... Listen, a lot of people believe in the secret and the vision board and all of that. But it's not something that ever worked for me. I tried it. <laughs> I had a vision board. I put shit up on it. And I was like, okay, this is what I want to achieve. But I didn't focus enough on it for it to work. For me, what has always worked is having the small next dream. You know, uh, the next step. So that you always have to take a step up in the ladder to be able to get to the top. You can't get to the top by flying up. Yeah. Human beings don't fly. It's a way of saying manifest something achievable. Yes. And then slowly you'll turn around and you say, oh, whoa, look at this legacy I've created. Mm. But if you have unachievable dreams, something that seems too out of the ordinary, then you're waiting for a miracle. Mm. And miracles don't happen very often. Mm. You have to create it for yourself. So what's the next step in your big dream? So if you want to buy a car, say for example, you have to figure out how much it's for. So if you want to buy something for 100 you have to make it for 100 So you have to work backwards from your goal. So if my goal is one thing, I'll work backwards. And what is the first step in that goal? I'll take that. Then the next step in that goal and slowly you'll buy your car. What would you like to change about this whole journey till this point? Is there anything you'd like to do differently? Yeah, I'd like to tell my younger self not to have stressed out so much. I used to have a lot of anxiety around... Losing my job, losing my position. Losing time. That's no, no, never time. Because that's a very, very common thing now with what teenagers, with college. Everyone's afraid that they're getting too old when they're 18. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid at 40 of getting too old yet. Um, yeah, well, that'll that's your glass ceiling for you right there. What do you mean? I mean, you're telling yourself you're too old at 18. Mm. It's like everyone's aging. That's the one thing as a fact we know, birth and death. That's going to happen to all of us. You have to age. You have to like that's something to really come to terms with early on in your life. I feel aging feels really nice. <laughs> like it, it makes you it's feel very normal. chill. Why are we putting so much equity on aging? Mm. That's the one thing we know that is going to happen. What is the stress around it? Mm. You're gonna get older. I mean, yeah, I feel like I did when I was still eighteen, but. Like I'm going to get older. Mm. And who am I right now at this age is what's important. What is my best opportunity at 18, at 25, at 35, at 60? Who is it that you want to be? I was just doing an interview with uh, Falguni Nair. And she started and started Nike at 50. Like that was her idea. And she built it into an empire today. So age ain't nothing but a number. That's a real, real fact. Mm. We put too much equity on age. It just doesn't matter. What matters is what you do about your life in the moment right now. Yeah. It's also the people around other people telling them that they're getting too old. So then especially. don't keep those people around you. Break mm. up with them. Bye. Mm. Peace out. <laughs> keep the people around you that are your champions. And maybe this is also something I realize when I'm older, but I tell young people this all the time. Do not hang around with poisonous people. Do not keep people around you that are toxic, that mess with your brain. Keep people around you that are genuinely happy with, happy for you. Only people that are genuinely happy for you. And whether if that's two people, you're a rich person. Yeah. Meeting you was a very big turning point for me. I mean, I'm saying that again. In what way? Just saw what you are in truth, you know, in, in reality, who you are. Right. So many people put on masks on the show, even today. Yeah, now, I've done four. Sure. You are 12th episode, I've done 400 now. Wow. And we still have lots of people putting on masks and you're just the same person. You're very real, <laughs> very professional, very, very polite. Like I can sense, people can sense the kindness. And that's the joy of podcasting that you really get to know yeah. who the, the other person is over a long, nice conversation like this. Um, but it's not easy to be a public person. Like, you know, I we we talk a lot about and we point a lot of fingers at celebrities and public people. It's a really hard job. 
it is so hard to be dinner table conversation every single day it is so hard to walk into a room and know that somebody is going to be talking about me when i leave good bad ugly not my control it is so hard to wake up every morning and know that i am for public consumption and my it can be an opinion that is completely the opposite of who i am people could think i'm unlikable people could say that i'm a horrible person people could say i'm unprofessional that's not my truth but i can't change that opinion mm. so if i sit and read every comment or every you know negative thing on social media or keep wondering about the paranoia of when i walk out of a room what is someone saying oh my god i'll never be able to achieve anything but it's so hard cut people a break cut public people everyone aspires to be a celebrity everyone is like oh i want to be famous and i want to be in that position but nobody sees how hard it is like it is so hard when you are going to a shaadi suppose your family ki shaadi and everyone is talking about you and pointing fingers at you can you imagine how you'll feel do you still go for family functions and all that can you can you because of the same fame angle means matlab you, you reach like this level of fame i i, I can't imagine so you so you're saying i'm not going to dance on the barat of my brother's wedding maybe no maybe nahi bhai of course <laughs> my cousins my brothers we family is most important to me hmm. my fame is a by product of my job it does not define me my fame is not my job it's very clear to me i am not famous for a living i work for a living and fame, fame comes with it hmm. so it's not something i can control yeah that's something that's thrust upon me the reason i'm asking you such like incisive questions is again i'm trying to learn like you yeah like you're you're setting the bar for the media professionals and that's what i meant the last time as well i realized that this is what it takes you know this this kind of professionalism this this kind of energy uh so don't get me wrong no i don't get, i'm yeah. no i'm not getting you wrong at all i'm just trying to elaborate on yeah. something that people don't really think about mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. you know um public people even though you're seeing a celebrity or someone every day on like billboards or or magazines there's still a human being behind them they also like to eat paratha and achar they also <laughs> like to sit in a like we also like to sit in a palti and dance at the barat of <laughs> your cousin and make sure that you get you know great food <laughs> the cho- the desires of a human being is the same mm. the needs or at least the people that i know i keep my friends my family i'm a very grounded person i come from the ground and i'm going to stay there and the day i behaved a certain way my mom would put a tapli on my head and say come back to <laughs> earth buddy does it happen now because i don't need it okay. i don't come from a place of arrogance okay got gotcha. you i never did i mean i may have had a little bit of that when i was in my early 20s where i was like wow i'm famous everyone knows <laughs> me and then quickly i realized when six of my films flopped that it doesn't last buddy mm. you have to consistently keep working so i never rest le- rest on my laurels that's the that's that's your downfall right there all right too much to absorb here <laughs> i do have one final too qu- much gyan <laughs> you no, always give me give gyan this is great <laughs> that's how we get the views gyan hi ban gayi hu main thanks for the views pc uh so anyway views are like drugs for youtubers but <laughs> and true okay uh so here's my honest question uh in terms of success i genuinely mean it when i say that like in the modern day you're one of the most successful human beings on this planet after seeing so much success what have you understood about the meaning of life <laughs> what has life become after that like wh- why do you have to keep going Why can't we all just go to beaches or meditate or become yeah, monks? You can. Okay. What's what's your meaning of life? I think the meaning of life is having purpose. We're born and we'll die. What you do in between that is your legacy, and if your legacy is, you know, walking with sand between your toes and living in a shack and and being happy and meditating, sure. it's an individual choice success is very subjective to each person is their own my success might be completely not attractive to somebody else's success you know so the equity that we put on you know you're the most successful one of the most successful people on the planet whatever great that's my version of it um you know but somebody else's version of it could be completely different but i really believe that what your purpose in life and what you do between birth and death is is what counts so the pursuit of anything else is just futile the pursuit should be what am i doing in my life what do i want to do in my life who do i want to be 
who do I want to touch? What do I want to create? Do I want to create? Or maybe I don't want to create. And all of it is fine. As long as you're at peace with the choices you make. So make choices that make you feel peaceful. Gotcha. All right. PC, another epic episode. Any signing off notes? Um, well, the only thing I'll say is the one thing you didn't talk about <laughs> was I'm very excited about um, the multiple things that I do. But the one thing I'm really and the reason that I, I, I've come back and I really wanted to come back to Bombay, but launching Anomaly in India really helped me um, you know, have a reason to come back right now because I'm not at home in Bombay. Mein. <laughs> you um, always have a home in Bombay. Yes, that is true. Bombay is my home. Pura pura Mumbai is my home. But, you know, like becoming a founder was terrifying because that's not what I do. It's not something I knew. Um, but creating hair care, understanding why do I want to get into beauty, makeup, skin, which one should I do? What is the gap? That learning of creating a brand which I'm so proud of and not for the fact that, oh, I've created a beauty product, but the fact that I found a white space, which I could create a product that you would have spent five times more money to buy. And Indian, uh, the Indian new consumer is very aspirational. You know, we want to take care of ourselves. We want to look our best. We want to get the best brands in the world. We're aware, um, especially that Gen Z that you're talking about. But we're also aware about what we're putting in our systems. We want to eat good. We want to try good stuff. So I'm very proud of Anomaly because it hits that trifecta. It's sustainable. We make all our packaging from 100% recycled trash, from ocean-bound plastic to landfills. So we pick up trash and we create these bottles. And because we're making our bottles from plastic trash, we didn't spend too much on it. That gave us more of a budget to have really excellent formulas. And when you use it, you will know. Please keep a bag for Ranveer. Um, <laughs> Looking forward. We'll be bathing in some anomaly tonight. Yeah, you will. Um, <laughs> and another thing is that marketing has always told us men's hair care needs and women's mm. hair care needs are different. Hair is made of the same stuff. Don't fall for this marketing thing. Anomaly is for anyone who has hair on their head. Um, please use... Um, and also the fact that it is clean. It has none of the bad stuff that usually form, um, formulas and shampoos do. If you read the ingredients of any shampoos, you'll see things like... Sulfates, silicones. Like that stuff should not exist in your shampoo. Mineral oil exists in shampoos. Mineral oil goes into your car. Why is it on your head? Can you imagine <laughs> what it is doing to your scalp and your system? It's crazy. But to be able to create something which is clean, affordable, sustainable and excellent at the same time is something I was really, really proud of. And um, when we brought it to Nika, we on the first day sold one Anomaly product every seven seconds. And that just was amazing to me. And then we had repeat customers. And in the last three months, where the top 10 hair care brands on Nike and they have like some 400, 500 hair care brands. So it just makes you feel really proud of the fact that you've made something good. And whenever you make a good movie, it's the same feeling. Or when you, I'm sure you, when you have a good podcast. Like this one? Like, yeah, like this one, <laughs> hopefully. Like, yeah, man, I did something good. So it's a really good feeling. Yeah. Priyanka Chopra, sharing her blessings with the world. That's all I'll say. I'll say one more thing though. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just the beginning of your business career and you're going to like really flourish. That same energy is going to enter this. And it's my crystal ball. <laughs> and it's telling, right it's, it's telling me the truth. It's telling me the truth. You're one of those people who just touches something and it turns to gold. No, it doesn't just turn to gold. In the long term, PC. You have to work towards making it gold. See, that's your perfectionism no, speaking No, it's not. Up. It's just the truth. So? Okay. You cannot touch something. Only Midas could do that. You cannot pick up something and say, oh, it's going to be great. It took a year and a half of research, of trying Anomaly on my friends, my family, my team. They were all my <laughs> lab rats <laughs> sitting and thinking about what the font should be, where the rose gold should be, should the trash be up front, what the um, smell of it should be. All of that takes work. Yeah. You just see the end of it and you say it's gold. It's gold because of the work that's yeah. gone into it. Yeah, I, I meant that you're a manufacturer of gold. And you said you believe in reincarnation. So mm -hmm. what if the modern day Midas is like reborn as Priyanka Chopra? Oh boy, <laughs> what a thought. <laughs>
I wish you I all- wish I had a collection of real gold buddy I'd be so rich. <laughs> I think you do. It's <laughs> no. just not the gold that the world recognizes as gold. It's all the blessings that are with you. That is true. The blessings that you spread. Priyanka Chopra, thank you for blessing TRS again. Thank 